I'm back. That's right. After two weeks of being off social media, the podcast and YouTube channel, I'm back at it. And I've got an exciting deal to share with you. Big numbers, big things coming up, and we're going to get to it all here on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Hey, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I hope that you uh, got a little bit of a break like I did for this last two weeks. I was completely off of social media. That means no Facebook, no Instagram, nothing like that. And also I decided that I would take two weeks off of the podcast and the YouTube channel as well, because we have amazing guests. They deserve promotion. And if I'm not able to promote them on social media, then I'm doing them a disservice. But we have a great lineup coming up in the next couple of weeks before I do uh, kind of get to doing more with guests. I want to just kind of share some things with you that have been on the top of my mind the last two weeks. And it's really ironic because, you know, of course, as soon as I go to take two weeks off, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to go outside more. I'm going to go walk my dogs more. I'm going to, I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to be more active when I get bored. I'm not going to check social media. And of course it was literally the hottest two weeks in Fresno that we've had. in I don't know how long. Plus we had all these fires the last like week that have crept in from Northern California. And so the, the air quality is just horrible. So uh, the best thing that I can say is that while I did have to stay inside, I did not even feel tempted to check social media, which was definitely a good thing. And in coming back after two weeks, uh, guess what I missed? Absolutely nothing. Um, and there's a saying out there, I think if uh, I think it's in the four hour work week uh, from Tim Ferriss and that you're not getting a lot of emails and messages because you're popular. You're getting a lot of emails and messages because you're responding. And that couldn't be um, more true in my experience here. I, I posted on both my social medias on Facebook, on Instagram, my professional pages that I was going to be gone for two weeks. And I didn't come back to a bunch of comments and messages from people saying, where are you? I can't get a hold of you. And uh, we've got, you know, everything's going on fire and we've, we've got the biggest deal. And we would only want to share with you. And it was nothing like that. Uh, people saw that there were other ways to contact me. They got me through email. They got me through phone. Um, and for me, like it was just a nice little relaxer. And as you can see, I got a little bored and went ahead and just took some of the hair off. If you're watching on YouTube right now, um, just got tired of salons, uh, waiting for salons to open up here in, in California. But with that being said, uh, there were some great things. I want to know from you, have you ever taken a break from social media? Have you ever um, had any time away that, you know, you just needed either a reset or you needed the opportunity to be able to just kind of get away from the negativity? Um, that would be, I, I would love to hear what your story is on that. And if you had any sort of revelations along the way when you did that. But I want to talk about a few things today. Um, and a couple stories for you too that I think will be encouraging, um, hopefully entertaining, and at the same time, just uh, some constructive pieces of advice that will help you to be able to do big deals. Um, and I've got five ways in which I believe that you can eventually be doing big deals when it comes to real estate. So the first thing I want to share is an awesome story that we're, it's still in the, the makes here. Uh, but so long story short, we got, I got a call from a realtor. Her name is Melissa Blake. She's a good friend of mine here in Fresno. And Melissa said, Hey, I think I've got this deal. Um, the, the owner only wants 60 grand and here's the address. And I look it up and I'm like, all right, yeah, th these numbers work out. She only wants 60 grand. We're thinking ARV between like 170 to 190, which sounds like a big, uh, big range, but here's why is because uh, we found out that there are tenants in there and they're being really uncooperative. And so with Fresno and California being the way that they are with a lot of things uh, for evictions that are not allowed to happen right now, uh, the way that the Fresno market is going today, this house could be worth 170, but because it's going to take us a while to pro possibly evict these people, it might eventually be worth 190. And so either way, we're happy with those numbers. And so we're looking at it and I'm like, all right, yeah, this looks good. What, what's like, what's the catch? Why do they only want 60,000? And she was like, well, basically this woman has power of attorney and she's selling it on behalf of a friend of hers that got deported. But here's the catch. The person who got deported, who originally got the deal, uh, somehow, some way had someone on title with them uh, that has completely disappeared. Uh, they're not related to them. I wouldn't even say that based on what they told me that they're friends. It just sounds like this person either offered to or, you know, who knows, 
all hearsay. Uh, but they, they somehow got themselves on title and helped this person to be able to purchase the, the home. Um, so we have to find this person. And so I, I ended up talking to Melissa and I said, hey, listen, you know, we're, we're going to pay you um, if we get this deal under contract. But it's much easier if you just connect with, with the seller so you don't have to be the third party person. Let's just talk um, directly to the seller. So she gave me the seller's number. And again, this is the person with power of attorney. I'm not going to use names here, but this is the person with the power of attorney. So she doesn't own the house, but she has the right to sell the house because of power of attorney. And so I call her and she's saying, well, you know, we've got someone actually that is going to offer 80,000. And so I just talked to her about, you know, how comfortable are you with this person offering 80,000? Uh, what, what are the terms of which they're saying that they're going to buy this house? And basically this person was just saying like, oh yeah, we're going to have you paid in 10 days. I said, well, you know, how is that possible when person number three, um, that is MIA is not, as you see my dog in the background here, working from home guys, it's fun. Um, so basically with this, this person MIA, um, I'm looking to help this seller, but I'm going to give them realistic expectations. So I said, Hey, listen, we'll give you, um, exactly what you want in terms of the amount, but I cannot guarantee you that we'll have money in your hand after 10 days because you can't even find this person. And if you can't find her, it's probably going to be a little bit of a task for us to find her. So anyway, long story short, I ended up being the best case solution for her uh, because of all the things I spoke of with her, um, the amount, you know, giving her a realistic timeline on clothes, uh, just kind of hitting at the emotion rather than just like, hey, here's what we do. Uh, I just told her, hey, listen, we're, our goal is going to be close as quickly as possible to get this off of your shoulders, to get you paid, and to you know make this a real easy process. And so we ended up negotiating $70,000. And um, so we signed the contract, but here's the deal. Now we got to go find the woman, right? We got to find this third person that has been MIA. So my partner on this, he says to me, hey, I've got a, an address that I think um, this person will actually might be living at. And so I went over to the address. Here's the funny thing. Okay, so I'm going to use a fake name just for the sake of this. Her name's Jennifer Smith, all right? Um, so I knock on the door and I say, hey, is Jennifer Smith home? And it's in a really rough area of town. Like I, it, it was a good thing I was there during the day because at night, I, there's no way I would have been there after sundown, like absolutely no way. Um, but I go there during the day and so I knock on the door. Hey, is Jennifer Smith here? The who I assume is either a mom or a sister or I, cause I don't really know the age of this person. Um, she, she answers the door and she says, Oh no, she's not here. She's um, she's just not here. What, what can I do for you? And I told her the situation, Hey, we, we think she was a part of a real estate deal uh, a few years back and we want to you know help her out. She is actually entitled to make some money. And before I know it, while I'm having a, a decently pleasant conversation with this woman, this guy shirtless comes up behind me and says, what do you want, bro? I was like, uh, well, sorry, who are you? Who are you? And he's like, he's like, who are you? Who are you from? And I was like, I'm from Fresno. Where, where, <laughs> what do you mean? And he was like, what do you want? I was like, I'm looking for uh, Jennifer Smith. Why, why do you want her? Where are you from? And he's just getting in my face. And then, you know, I've, I've been, I, I've watched the shows. I've watched the, all these things. Of course, when you, when you feel like you're going into a really uncomfortable conversation, a really uncomfortable place, what do you think is going to happen? Like a knife is going to get drawn or a gun's going to get drawn. And here's this white boy in the middle of like the ghetto of Fresno <laughs> asking about this person. And so I'm like getting flustered to be completely honest. I'm getting 100% flustered. I can't even speak before this guy's asking, where are you from? Where are you from? He just keeps asking that question. I said, Fresno, where are you from? Northern Fresno, uh, where, where are you from? I, I don't know how to answer that question. I've already answered the question. Uh, so I'm getting flustered at this point. I said, I took a deep breath. I said, listen, sir, um, I'm sorry if I bothered you. I'm looking for Jennifer Smith because she was a part of a real estate deal that my partner and I are trying to own. And again, he cuts me off and he says, no, she ain't been a part of no real estate deal. Get out of here. I was like, okay, I apologize. As I'm walking away, he says, hey, and I think, oh my gosh. So I got to turn back around. What's going to happen now? And he says, hey, listen, um, actually you're looking that you're looking for Jennifer Smith, my sister, not Jennifer Smith, my daughter. So he has a daughter named Jennifer Smith, but it's actually his sister, Jennifer Smith, again, fake name that doesn't even live there. And she was a part of it. And he even says, he's like, Oh, you're talking about the, the house on first street. And I was like, 
yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He's like, yeah, um, yada, yada, yada. She, you know, he had his side of the story. It was much different than the seller side of the story. Long story short, I just told him, listen, I don't know what happened here, but all I know is that in order for us to sell this house, we have to have Jennifer's consent and she's entitled to make some money. And so this happened just a few days ago. We're still working on getting him to have Jennifer call us, but now he told us where she lives, what state she lives in. So now that we know that we can actually target down a little bit more to find out where she's at. Long story short, holy cow, like this, this deal, I literally thought like a gun or a knife was going to be pulled on me because this guy was, he looked like he meant business. And again, like here's the white boy uh, who grew up in Northern Fresno, which like, if you don't know, Northern Fresno is not exactly uh, the the hood. Um, <laughs> so um, I was, I was terrified, but here's what I want to point out is that this deal is going to be big. It's going to be the biggest deal if, if it goes through and we can find this Jennifer Smith, quote unquote, person, um, then we will be able to ideally negotiate with her um, and be able to get this thing signed off. And then again, we've got to get tenants kicked out. But my partner, that's why, I, and this is why I'm bringing a partner in because like I, I don't know left from right when it comes to finding a person, when it comes from kicking out tenants, those are things that I'm still learning. Um, so anyway, what, what I want to share here is that this is going to be a big deal, um, possibly a $60,000 or more profit split between a partner and I. Um, that will be the biggest deal that I've done so far. We're about to sell a deal right now uh, that is going on the market this week. And if everything goes as planned, knock on wood, um, then we will have uh, – to date my biggest deal sold, which will be at least a $50,000 profit. So I started kind of thinking about this. I'm like, man, a year ago, where was I? And so August of a year ago, um, I had just got my second property under contract and was looking for my third property. Again, if you don't know my story, I started in real estate in 2019, um, in January of 2019, January 6th to be exact. I'm looking at the notes here. So in 2019, I did three flips. I did one burr. I did one wholesale and we started our officially started the full on Airbnb business. I've been doing it for five years, just kind of dabbling in it uh, or sorry, four years dabbling in it, but we officially started like a legitimate business and got six Airbnbs. So in total, what is that? That's 11 real estate deals, five legitimate real estate deals, six Airbnbs. In 2020 here, as I'm recording this on August 24th, we've done two flips. We've acquired three creative finance properties, basically subject to, um, we have this one in contract in which we, you know, almost, I almost got killed or felt like I was going to, and we've done 14 new Airbnbs. So what is that? Two, five, six, 20 deals. So compared to 11 last year, already at 20 deals. And we're basically two thirds of the way through the year. And on my biggest deal in 2019 or even to date, uh, paid me just south of $28,000. And now we're talking about two deals here in the span of really just a few months. I could pay over fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. And I'm thinking to myself, how did I get here? Like this is, this is incredible to be attracting these kinds of deals. And so I, I basically put it down to five different ways in which I believe that if you get started in real estate today, you can be doing big deals eventually as well. And, and that's the big thing here is that like, I don't know any overnight successes. I, I wouldn't even call myself an overnight success um, or, or any sort of success compared to a lot of people in real estate being fully transparent. Like you guys have heard the people that I have uh, interviewed here on the show. And you've got guys that are doing over a hundred deals, not just per year, but some of them per month. Like it makes you feel like your 20 deals in two thirds of a, of a year just isn't very much. But again, it's putting things in perspective, right? Like, that is good for me and my lifestyle. Um, and I don't need to be doing the hundred deals. Will I eventually get there one day? Yeah, probably. Um, do I have to? No, probably not, but I want to. Um, but if you want to be there and if you want to be doing deals that will allow you to leave your job, allow you to provide for your family better, allow you to just see things in a whole different perspective. Like the way that I view life and money and um, what I can accomplish today versus where I was a year and a half ago, two years ago, it's just vastly different because when you have proof of concept, when you finally see like, wow, this is possible, then you just start thinking bigger. 
And so if you want to think bigger and you want to do bigger deals, here is what I really accumulate the, the five things that I've done over the last basically, what is it, 20 months um, to be able to get to this point of doing big deals. So the first one is time. Again, like I, I have this argument with actually a, a a business partner of mine, he's been on the show a couple of times, Stratton. I believe in patience. He doesn't believe in patience, uh, which is fine. But it's, it's, not, it's not patience of like, hey, you got to wait to be successful. It's, it's patience of like, hey, you got to do things to get to that point of being successful. You can't just wake up one day and be like, I want to have a real estate business and then suddenly have three deals under contract. You have to do things in order to get there. And that takes a little bit of patience, right? So it's, it's time, first of all. It took me really, what was it? We got it under contract three months ago. So it took me 17 months to get our biggest deal to date. Okay. And that's, that's time. It takes some time, but it takes this dedication as well. I'm not doing real estate one day and then the next day. So this is number two, dedication. I'm not doing real estate one day. And then the next day I'm going and um, saying, okay, I'm not going to focus on real estate at all today. I'm going to focus on, um, you know, maybe I want to start a, a Bitcoin thing, or maybe I want to start a stocks thing. And, and I, and I start spreading myself thin, right? It's just like what we talk about with the mass acronym, you master, you automate, and then you scale, and then you move on to something new. So I got laser focused on how can I master real estate and then eventually became Airbnb. So I start, worked on focusing and mastering my real estate business. Then I started automating it, getting the right teammates, getting the right people that would help me to be able to, to make decisions without me being around. And then that allows me to scale it. And especially with getting enough money in, that's going to allow you to scale as well. Um, so it's this dedication to one thing. Um, what is it that John Lee Dumas says? Um, it's uh, one path until success. What does that spell? One path until success. Uh, oh, focus. That's what it was. Focus. Um, it's like focus on one thing. I, I can't remember, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's, it's basically you, oh, one course. Focus on one course until success. And so that's, that's exactly what we're talking about here with dedication. So time, dedication, a consistent message is number three for me. So what that means is I'm talking about marketing. And so marketing for some people who don't want to do like this, a podcast or a YouTube channel would look like, what is um, your marketing? Is it going to be um, direct mail? And if it's direct mail, are you going to be consistently putting out the same message? We've got a friend of ours here in town um, who is a man of faith and his consistent message is that he is, uh, you know, the, the, the Christian, uh, buyer or the Christian real estate guy. And, and he lives that lifestyle. He's not faking that. He lives it. And so for that reason, his consistent message reaches the right people. It attracts the right people. And therefore, he's getting a lot of deals. So what is your consistent message going to be? Is it going to be, first of all, you have to figure out what platform. And then you have to figure out what is that message that's going to make you different. So for me, it was, hey, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and a podcast and be completely transparent with I'm learning this business. I'm not going to try to be the, the, the main man. I'm not going to try to be like, oh yeah, I know everything because I, I don't know everything. I still know everything. But along the way, I start picking up little things here and there that do make me an expert in a certain niche. And that ended up being Airbnb. And so my message turned from, hey, just flipping and wholesaling and all this stuff it, to really a, a very consistent message of Airbnb is what took over. And then it turned into like, hey, I've got all these people coming to me for Airbnb. And oh, by the way, Kyle does a lot of stuff with like flips and all this kind of things too. So like I've got real estate agents and um, wholesalers and people who are thinking of me. I'm at top of mind for them to bring me deals. Now, you might want to get more direct to the seller. So your focus might be, let's do texting, let's do uh, Craigslist, let's do direct mail, let's do bandit signs. And But is that message going to be consistent enough in both the amount and the type of message you're putting out that will attract the right people? So uh, that's number three. Being a problem solver is number four. You get someone on the phone and they've got a problem, right? 
just like this deal um, where this woman is the power of attorney, like I mentioned, she had a friend that was deported. He had a problem. He called her. She became power of attorney. She solved his problem for being able to solve, uh, sell the house. But now she's got a problem. She can't find the third person. So my job is to come in and to meet her needs for how much she wants for the house. We already met that at 70000 And now we have to go find this person. If we can be a problem solver, we can get paid to be a problem solver and paid very, very well. And then when I don't have the answers to problems and how to solve them, that's when I bring in partners to fill in those gaps. That's why I have a partner on this deal as well. Um, that deal that I told you that we're going to be selling later this week. I had a problem. I didn't have a deal. This guy knew someone who wanted to sell their house and had a problem. Their dad who owned the house was basically on his deathbed. And he introduced the two of us. And he ended up funding the deal as well. So now we're partners on this deal and I'm taking care of his problem, which is he didn't know what to do with the house. I know how to rehab it. I know what it how to list it. I know how to do all these things that he didn't know how to do. And we're all solving each other's problems and we're getting paid to do it along the way. That's a beautiful thing. Lastly, the right team. You have to have the right team. And when I talk about the right team, I'm talking about a lot of things. I'm talking about your contractors, your real estate agents, they're going to list it, your private money lenders, your hard money lenders, uh, your cleaner, your all these different things. Um, you have to have the right team available in order to make this thing a well-oiled machine. And again, going back to the mass formula, master automate scale, you can't scale if you don't have the right teammates. You can't automate it if you don't have the right teammates. And so for me, like the biggest one when it comes to these deals, this 50, 60 or plus thousand dollar or more deals that we're doing, if I don't have the right contractor, that can destroy the deal. It could take too much time. It could take, you know, they could go over budget. They could completely stop in the middle of doing work and say, figure it out with someone else. And now I'm over budget with someone else. Um, they, they could say they're going to do all these things the right way. And then, you know, they do everything the wrong way. And then now I've got all these issues with the home inspection. So your, your con contractor is going to be the biggest deal uh, on your team to make sure that these big deals stay big deals and you don't lose all your profit. So those were the five things. Once again, just recapping that uh, number one time, number two, dedication, number three, consistent message, number four, be a problem solver. And lastly, having the right teammates. So those are the ways in which I have found that in the last 20 months have led me to these big deals. I've been very blessed to have these great people that have helped me along the way. Uh, my mentors, uh, the people that have been bringing me deals, but I do believe a lot of this has to do with who are you attracting and how dedicated you are, how patient you are with the process. Are you a problem solver? And that will lead you to lead you to all these great teammates that can help you to automate it. So I hope this was helpful today. I, I really think this can be used for any sense of business, um, but especially here in real estate, this is the way that I've found that has helped me to be able to do these big deals. So um, if you have any questions, any comments, if you're on the YouTube channel, please drop a comment. Um, if you're check, you know, checking this out on Instagram, make sure to go check us out. It's at Fearless Kyle. I would love to be able to uh, answer any of your questions there. And you can always just check us out on our website to fearlesskyle.com. If you have not already downloaded our Airbnb Profit Calculator, tons of people are downloading that, getting great, great information on whether or not they have an Airbnb deal or an Airbnb dud. Uh, that is the first step to knowing if you can start your Airbnb business with that first property. So thank you so much for joining us today and for allowing me to help you to conquer the world of investing. I hope you all have a great rest of your week.